I'm Tarina. This is MGig. I'm joined by Simon Barnett, Hi. one of our producers. During this podcast, we'll discuss the music industry, how it looked and how it's currently looking. Today, we will speak to Ray Evans, one of the founders of Mushroom Records, and also Johnny Halliday, the owner of the Fad Bar in the city, which is a music venue, amongst other things. We spoke to some people about the music industry prior to the pandemic and how it was evolving. Check it out. The primary impact has been that um, artists used to primarily drive their income through the sales of records and CDs, where these days their primary source of income is through touring shows, you know, ticket sales and sponsorship. Vastly different than 20 years ago. 20 years ago they toured to supplement and promote their record sales. These days their primary income is, is touring. I guess a lot's changed in the last 10 to 20 years in where our songwriters are getting their royalties from. Um, obviously physical sales have gone down dramatically, so CD and vinyl and I guess cassette to a point, but uh, that has decreased rapidly whilst digital has risen. I guess that's the main change over that little while. Artists acknowledge that for streaming, for an example, is, is a low royalty rate. Um, it's certainly lower than, than what they'd expect. Um, however, they do get a lot of data that they wouldn't get from other services. So for example, with radio, you get given the information on radio, you get told you got played on, you know, Triple J, for example. That's great, but here you can say uh, X amount of streams are coming from this particular city. Uh, or this song seems to be doing better than this song, uh, or they mightn't even know that they were popular in a country that they're popular in. So um, in that instance, that data can really shape their set lists for when they play live, or it can shape where they might route a tour. The way a musician can make money, there's three basic streams. Uh, that would be um, their music by selling you know, the albums or tracks on iTunes, their merchandise and touring. Um, things like Spotify have removed one of those streams. Yeah, well, I think with venues, it's, it's really important that they exist because without venues and our members or artists won't have anywhere to play. Um, touring is a really important part of an artist's cycle. They need to be able to perform live to their fans first and foremost, but it's also a good revenue source. My current job um, is to try and encourage um, governments and to, for Live Nation to get actively involved in trying to secure more venues, whether that be to encourage governments to build them or whether it be that we go and build them ourselves so that we can bring more product into Australia. The demand is there, our fans are telling us they want more product but there isn't the venues to tour them through. I think it is, yeah, and I think it's a, it's a really good thing that, that people are touring a lot more. I mean, that's, that's a really positive aspect of it um, because it's, it's great to see all these bands and, and old bands coming together and touring again and, and the more music flooding the market, especially on the stages, to me, that's the best thing ever, you know? So that's a really positive, positive thing. Yeah, I did lots of gigs. Lots and lots of gigs, all the gigs. And I took myself on tour. I, you know, just booked gigs in all different cities and then went and then went to all their open mic nights and all their shows and I'd go hang out in Sydney and Brisbane and try and meet as many people as I could. And um, yeah, that was a good way of doing it for me. Like made lots of friends and got my name out that way. Cause I released a single here in, you know, in Melbourne you know, when I was first getting my name out. I felt like, okay, this is good, but you know, I feel like most of the hip hop people in Melbourne know me, so how can I, you know, do better than this and get my name out further? So I started traveling a lot. Um, and then everyone started inviting me back and yeah, I get to play nationally all the time. That was, that. you know, that, it's interesting. It's, it's um, people trying to do their art and they have to have a living. Mm. as well. I mean, is that is that normal in the music business? It seems to be at the moment. Um, I think there was a, a, Susie made a good point about the, you know, yeah, the government expecting you to 
have a career and then have this as, as somewhat like as a hobby on the side. But then there's also the other level of once you do have as a full-time job, touring being a massive way to make income, if you were to be 24-hour touring artist, what impact does that have on the artist as well? Um, it's, yeah. So you, you've spoken to a lot of bands. How, how do they, um, do they like touring? They do. They, they usually do like touring, but that's because, especially for local bands, they, are, they do have their daytime job. And this is, as much as they want it to be a full-time thing, it's, it's a struggle. So it is a part-time thing for them, a lot of them. So having a tour is, is, is somewhat of, you know, it's, it's like a holiday for them in, in a such that they get to go. It's, it's their work, but they get to go and um, spend a week just focusing on on their music you know um so i would i would think they enjoy touring but i imagine it could have an impact if you were doing it 24 7 of course is it a lonely thing to do because you'd just be you'd just be rolling Mm. up to a city or a town and you'd be in a hotel and yeah do you get to meet many people i mean i think for bands if they got other people on the bill then I think that it, it 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 can be a great way to meet other artists and other bands. You meet a lot of other bands that you'd probably put on at gigs when they came to Melbourne if they were touring again or so. Um, but it would be lonely, I think, you know, being in hotels every night, having to move around. So is do you know many people that are doing, are, that are in musicians and... Yeah, uh, that are doing things, but not in hospitality, in more more the profession. You know, it's like, um, is there? Do you know any musicians that are, uh, like run recording studios or? Yeah, well, I did have a. Um, there was a young group um, of guys, and they started their own. So a lot of them have their own. They're starting independent labels, um, and they would have like you know they connected through a lot of their bands like their mates in other bands. And so then they there was um, one particular band, Sapphire Street, um, their guitarist, he was pro- running a rec- like his own sort of independent label and through that was also promoting all his mates' bands as well. And then they started having friends that were doing DJ work as well. So they started using social media to put up like these Thursday night DJ sessions and things like that. So they were, they branded out from just their band. So there, there is people out there doing, you know, I don't think at this point it's profitable. Um, they maybe through merch um, and obviously, you know, gigs, touring. Um, uh, but the idea would be that maybe one day they just keep working it and they may, may be able to make some, some money out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, well, you'd hope with the, if we continue to... to um, put their energies to that. Um, well, you've got, to, you've got to take your hat off the, for, the, for the trying. Definitely. I, I, I thought it was, um, it was, it was it, the interview that I had with them in terms of the band, it, it became something else because they had such a heavy uh, sort of involvement in actually producing music. It wasn't just about the band after that um, because of the little, yeah, the other little things that they're doing to stay in music when they're not just focusing on the band, which is great, I think. Well, how do you think it's going to, how do you think, you know, when, when the doors are open and, and, and we're not locked down anymore, how do you think, what do you think's going to change? How do you think it's going to start getting back into things? It's going to be interesting because it, it, it's kind of unknown at this point. At the moment, everything is heavily online. Everything, you know, we've got our live streams of different, um, you know, uh, delivered live and um, live aid and different different um, streaming platforms at the moment. It's, it's going to be interesting whether we're going to keep moving that way or there's going to be, once we're all free, there's going to be a heavy demand for more venues or because we're going to lose a lot of them during this lockdown as well. So um, it's it's a scary sort of... We won't lose the big places like the Palais. No, and, no. You know? It's the little ones, though, that, that help those little artists on their way to getting, getting promoting more of their music and, and you know, like 
that's how they're making their music in the beginning as well through now, into yeah, it's interesting, what it's going to look like. Yeah. It's interesting what people are doing, mm. like Mimo, right? They're putting on performances and selling, you know, video tickets for $10. Yeah. And I hear that the um, uh, the venue takes a third, the artist takes a third, and uh, someone else takes a third. The engineers, the sound engineers oh, and stuff. Production, production takes staff, a third. Production staff, yeah. yeah. I know with uh, Delivered Live, I'm not sure with um, me, uh, Mimo if they're doing it, but um, the artist is picking the sound engineers as well, the production staff and the venue for the, for the um, profits to go to for the Delivered Live, which I think is, which is awesome. They get to pick, you know, uh, the, the venue they want to support and the, and the production staff they want to support as well. So and there's also um, like Jimmy Barnes and people like that are mm. are just um, broadcasting from home. Yep. <laughs> you know, uh, and they and they there's no sophistication in equipment they have. They just have their guitar and a, and uh, and a, maybe a microphone. Yeah. And they just start playing. Yeah, there's a lot of artists that are doing that through Instagram as well. Um, I'm seeing you can they're just putting up sort of you know posts like I'll be on. And you jump on live and it's just them, yeah, in their house with their, their phone. I, I watched one by an artist who said she'd had her phone rigged up with some tape and some tongs to hold it while she was performing. It's a little bit of a, a DIY sort of stand. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's interesting, isn't it? So what do you think they're doing it? Because they're obviously not making any money out of it. Well, it's for the, for the love, you know. It's to keep... For one, it's probably for their sanity, I would say, being able to have that outlet to play music if you can't get out to a venue and to, to perform. So I'd say one of it is for their own sanity to be able to play still um, and for the fan sanity as well to keep them engaged um, in the music as well. Um, I think it's important. You know, music is, music is important. It, it, um, Do you think venues will just open and book bands? I think it's probably going to be a bit of a slow process. We've never seen anything like this. So, for one, the music industry was changing prior to this and, and, and now it, it's de- it has to change um, with this pandemic. So, it's, it's, it's kind of unknown. I think, I think it's going to go slow. I, I don't think... I think it's going to be a slow process into having, you know... Um, being able to go out to an event or a gig again. I think it's going to be a weird transition. Now we have one of the founders of Mushroom Records on the line, uh, Ray Evans. Ray, how do you think the music business is uh, coping with the current climate? I think there's a spirit of uh, camaraderie, but uh, the the effect is that the uh, virtual world isn't the real world. Uh, Ray, what what do you think is going to happen when we come up to the other side? Well, I'm hoping, as, as, as we all are, that uh, things adjust and we go back to a normal uh, realm. Uh, however, in that regard, I think music, there, people have been starved for the lockdown, so music should boom again. I mm. think uh, there's no replacing live music. Definitely not. I think there's not going to be a lack of events in 2021. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's going to go from a, um, uh, a drought to a flood. Um, but there's a lot of factors that we've got to get across before then, obviously, with what and how the, uh, the health issue is dealt with. But we're all uh, hoping that uh, a vaccine eventuates and uh, music returns to its rightful uh, position. Yeah. And what's your view on the venues at the moment, how they're coping during, during the lockdown? How's that going to look after this? There's, you know, a lot of them are struggling at the moment to stay open. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that... Uh, I mean, I've seen and read recently that there are some uh, possible funds and support coming from government for the arts and for uh, for music. Um, However, the reality is that if you've got a fixed overhead and you've got no uh, income, that you're suffering. Um, Ray, how are you coping? How's your business uh, coping during this time? Oh, it's fantastic. We had an exhibition and three days before it happened and takes a year to put together, uh, we were, the total restrictions came in, so we had to cancel and postpone it. So 
we, we've postponed it to October. Mm-hmm. Then we've post- and that's, that doesn't work, we've postponed it to April. If that doesn't work, we've postponed it to October the following year. Wow. If that doesn't work, we're getting out of the business. Okay. <laughs> so great so far then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Well, the business, I mean, we're, we're, we're on the fringe of events, obviously. We're, we're a business event port, uh, platform, but uh, we're no different to a, to a hotel or a pub or anything else. We all work on the same dynamics, and the yeah. dynamics are that we, we need people to attend and we need interaction and B2B uh, platform to take place. Thanks a lot, Ray. Thanks, Ray. That's all right, mate. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks, See mate. You, Ray. We have Johnny Halliday, owner of the Fad Gallery and Bar, on the line. Hi, Tarina. Hi, Johnny. Um, tell us a bit about your venue and how you're being affected during this pandemic. Um, that's it. You closed and we were just talking about it, actually. And uh, Or I was just talking about it. And we don't have any idea when we're going to reopen. And we don't know under what circumstances we will be allowed to reopen. And so it's pretty difficult at the moment. It's a very difficult time. Yeah, understandably. And mm. how... Ha- so obviously, it's a bit unknown at the moment. What do you think the outcome's going to be for for yourself as a venue owner and also as a musician after this lockdown is is lifted? Well, as a musician, I wouldn't really call myself a musician. I might I sing, but um, uh, but I think that I mean, it, look, it's really tough getting a gig now. Mm. Uh, it's going to be tougher getting a gig because I believe that when we are able to reopen that we will be restricted because of social distancing or physical distancing or whatever they want to call it. But if it's anything like um, like it was before we were closed down, we, we had to reduce the numbers in this place and uh, they basically did that on the actual physical size of the venue itself so we were allowed to have 26 people into fat Mm. and that was including our staff uh obviously with 26 people if you had a band like a band like ours um you know there's eight eight nine people involved you got two people on the bar (laughs) you know to be allowed to have dozen other people you know you'd be stuffed yeah. So, you know, um, if, if that's if, if, if they're going to sort of have social distancing uh, regs in and stuff like that, <laughs> then I despair for the music industry because yeah. no one will be allowed to get into the room after the music. <laughs> you, you might as well live stream it outside. <laughs> they could stand out the side in the, in the street or something, you know. I stand um, outside and look through the window. Yeah, it's, you know, like, so, I mean, look, I think it's so difficult to know at the moment. I don't, I don't mm. think the government knows what they're going to do. All yeah. I do, all I am sure of is that it's going to be very tough up until Christmas because, I mean, I think that people are going to get out as soon as they can. I think that people go, yeah, great. Now, not all people, but, you know, people who are – into going out and, and going to bands and going to bars and stuff like that. I mean, they're chaping it, you know, they're chaping it at the mouth. Mm. Um, yeah, they're not chaping, they're chomping at the bit. Um, they, they, they're probably chaping as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll, I think it'll curtail a lot of people going out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting at, at when how they're mm. going to allow giving the power back to us that government's not usually... They don't usually enjoy giving back power once they have it. <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, but this is, I mean, you know, look, it's very hard to enforce social distancing. I mean, at the moment, I mean, I can understand and everybody understands it, but, I mean, people are going to relax. I mean, if this is not if this is not in our community, um, there is no reason why people can't be. I mean, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a tactile sort of guy. Ask Tim, you know. I give him a hug and put my arm around his shoulder and things like that. And I miss, and I miss that that sort of um, you know physical um, contact with people. And it's just you know it's just because I'm a tactile guy. I mean I like you know shaking hands and stuff like that. I mean you know they're not. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But I mean I think you know people are saying oh you know people are never going to shake hands again. Well maybe not, but I probably will. <laughs> but you know I'll, I'll just forget. I'll just forget. I'll forget that I'm not supposed to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean yeah, because it's, it's been so natural. Second. Would with your band, would you guys do uh, live streaming? Yeah. Is that something you'd consider? 
Yeah, look, we uh, we're certainly um, we're certainly doing that. Uh, certainly thinking of that. The way I'm thinking about this space, I mean, on about you know what's going to happen is that certainly live streaming is a thing. I don't know how we can um, make a dollar out of it, but certainly from the point of view of um, Getting getting stuff out there and just uh, in, in just doing something different. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about doing it. You know, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and um, so we do maybe comedy on Tuesday, the Queens on Wednesday with some, uh, you know, with a band for another hour after them, perhaps a young band, emerging band, you know, as we've been doing, and then Thursday doing the band, you know, or you know, band night, and then Friday night doing, you know, Johnny's Walkabout or something. You know, and um, having a chat to people and and interviewing people and stuff like that. So, I mean, we don't know, but that's where we're sort of thinking about going. Mm. Um, just to, uh, you know, keep going. And, I mean, it's, it's just so difficult to know. It really is. Yeah, it's a bit unknown at this Tarina. point. Yes, it is. It's, it's, very, it's very difficult to know what to do. The only thing you can really do is to... What we're doing is just doing maintenance and cleaning up and getting organised and we're, you know, assuming we've got four months until we open that um, we can get a whole lot of this stuff organised before then so when we reopen and we're ready to open that we do it with a bit of a bang and hopefully a few people who are out and about, you know, that's that's what it's about. I mean, it, I mean, if you go out in the streets of Melbourne at the moment, I mean, there's no one there. I mean, mm. you know, I've, I've been in here for 25 years this year. Uh, it was 25 years last last Sunday that um, I've had this place, and um, you know, even 25 years ago, there was more people in the city than there are at the moment. Yeah. It's so a ghost um, town. you know, it is a ghost town. So it's unbelievable. Mm. Really tough. Mm. Then thanks a lot, Johnny. That was really great. Yeah, thank That's you. That's a pleasure, Simon. Yeah. Tarina, pleasure to pleasure to speak. That's all we have for now. Next episode, we'll be speaking to some musicians about how they're coping in the current crisis. And we'll also have a chat to some other industry professionals. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.